Hello everybody and welcome back to Drone Rich. Today we're doing a review of the Chasing Gladius Mini Underwater Drone. So we have the drone right here, it's in the box, and we're about to unbox and then take this drone for a couple test dives. I'm really excited to see how this drone actually performs underwater, and this is actually the first underwater drone that I've ever tried out here on the Drone Rich YouTube channel. So super excited to unbox this thing. It says that it can go to a max depth of 330 feet and it includes a 100 meter tether, which means it includes a 100 meter cable. So this drone can actually go 100 meters or 330 feet deep. So I'm so excited to see if this drone can actually go that deep. And it comes with a portable backpack, which I'll be including here as well, showing you guys. And it also includes one touch depth lock mode, which means that it'll, it'll maintain its depth just by hitting a single button on the controller. It also includes a 45 degree adjustable tilt lock mode, which means the drone will dive at a 45 degree angle. So super excited to test all of this out. Like I said, 330 feet max dive depth, a 4K camera, and it actually includes one touch sharing on social media. So you can share your drone videos or pictures on social media, and you can even live stream to YouTube, as you can see right there. You can literally live stream to YouTube with this underwater drone. So super excited to take this out and a two hour runtime, which is a really long time for drones. You know, I'm used to flying conventional drones that fly in the sky that fly for like 15 minutes and we're out of battery, but this drone can supposedly run for two hours underwater, which is super cool. Super excited to unbox this thing and then take it for some test dives and show you guys along the way. So first of all, let's unbox this thing and see what it includes inside. All right, so very first look into the box. But as you can see, we have the drone's controller right on top. First feel of the controller, it feels really good. I like that you can either uh, control it this way or with your thumbs actually on top like this. It looks like they click in as well. We got an off, on button. Um, there's actually some battery in there as well, which I like that it's a rechargeable um, controller, which is really nice. Looks like we have that um, automatic depth hold, Bluetooth synced a controller as well and we have some lock and we have some camera buttons on the top of the controller so super excited to use this thing and actually use it in the water so there we go we have the controller and we have all these things right here I'm gonna be having to read about it in the manual about what each of these little things means and then it looks like we have the base station right here and we have this it looks like a little towel which will be really nice to clean off the drone once we're done using it so let's fold up that towel right here oh actually under the towel it looks like here is our tether cord. So this is our 330 feet or 100 meters of tethering cord right here, which is a lot. Look at all this. So the drone's going to be able to go 330 feet away from the camera. So super excited. Um, so there is the tethering cord. And underneath this whole thing, if we cover that back up there, underneath this whole thing is the drone itself. Look at that. Um, I know they call this the Gladius Mini, but it's actually a pretty decently sized uh, underwater drone. So taking a look at it right here, it's pretty heavy, which you're going to want um, for an underwater drone, so it'll actually sink under the surface and be neutrally buoyant. But here is the Gladius Mini in all of its glory. So take a look at this right here. It looks like we got vertical propellers right here and then horizontal propellers in the back. Um, so this is what the drone actually looks like. Looks very hydrodynamic. And there is that 4K Ultra HD camera right in the front of the drone right there. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to use this. And two lights right on each side as well. Super excited to use this thing. It looks like the tethering cable attaches right on top of this drone. So here is the Chasing Innovations Gladius Mini Underwater Drone. Oh my gosh, I cannot tell you guys how excited I am to actually use this thing. So to mount the phone bracket holder that will actually attach your phone to the controller, you need this little piece right here, and then on the back of the controller is this little screw out thing. So you just screw this out right here, and now you actually have the opportunity to attach the phone bracket mounting holder. So make sure it snaps into place right here. And then once that snaps into place, you just simply just screw this back in, and then you'll have the phone holder attached to this. Now we have to actually attach what actually holds the phone and that's this little thing right here so we just have to so we just have to unscrew it put that in there and then put that little ball joint in there and then tighten it up and there we go now the phone holder is connected 
to the Gladius Minis controller. So here's the controller with the phone bracket attached and it's all ready to hold my phone and so we can actually attach via the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connection so we can see a live FPV view of what the drone sees directly on our synced phone. All right, now we're gonna be taking a look at the backpack that actually also comes with this underwater drone. So opening up the box here, here is the backpack that comes with the drone. As you guys can see, it's a pretty standard sized backpack and it looks like the drone is going to fit in it very good. So we have the backpack there and we have this little carrying case as well, which is gonna come in really handy. So we can put the box off to the side and taking a look at this backpack here, as you can see, it says Chasing Innovations right on top of the backpack right there. And looking at the backpack, also we got a logo right there. And let's, take, let's open it up, but taking a look at the outside of this backpack, you can actually tell that the zippers are actually lined with this rubber. So I think that's gonna really help keep water out of this backpack when you are using it. So opening it up here, here is the first pocket and it looks like we just have some foam in there just to uh, store things. And then as you can see, we just have a little plastic placeholder in there. And then we have another little pocket right there. And now let's open up the main pocket of this backpack right here. So this is where the drone is actually going to be stored. As you guys can see, the drone should fit perfectly right in this little placeholder that they custom built just for this backpack, which is really cool. So let's actually put the drone in here and see how it actually fits inside of the backpack. So as you can see right here, the drone fits very snugly right in this little pre-made slot for it. All you got to do is just push it in right there and the drone is secured inside of the backpack. So I'm going to load up all this other stuff into the backpack including this tethering cable and all the other things that comes with the controller. And as you can see the tethering cable just slides in this little slot right here very nicely and it fits perfectly. And I like that this backpack also actually comes with these little carrying cases. So you can put the cable and the drone in these little cases and keep them secured and waterproof and then uh, just slide it right into this backpack slot in their little pre-designed cases as well, which gives it a little bit of extra protection. So they actually also included one for the entire drone as well. So we can put the drone inside of one of these things as well. Just a little extra added layer of protection, which is always nice. And these little cases right here are also gonna help the backpack, the inside of the backpack not get wet after the drone is done with the test dive because as you know, the drone's gonna be underwater, so it might get a little wet, but putting them in these little cases is gonna help keep the water outside of the inside of the backpack so there's no mold or anything like that. So there we go, we got the drone and the tethering cable all packed up in the bag. Now we can just zip it shut, just like so. And now let's put away the controller and everything, and I love that it has these little foam pre-designed slots so you can put the controller and everything else that the drone comes with directly into the backpack very easily. All right, so we have each of the little pieces of the drone in these little pre-designed pockets that it comes with, which is super cool. And as you can see, that just slides directly right into the backpack, and now we can close the backpack. So here's the user manual it comes with as well, and here are some extra parts and things that you might need. So I'm gonna actually read the manual, and then we're gonna take the Gladius Mini for a test dive. So I'll see you guys at the test dive. Hello everybody and welcome to the test dive of the Chasing Innovations Gladius Mini underwater drone. So as you can see we have the backpack up right here with all of the essential equipment packed up into here and like I said uh, earlier in the unboxing of this review I really love how these zippers actually are waterproof so it, it creates a nice little waterproof seal there which is really helpful especially when it's a little bit wavy out like today as you guys can see a little bit of water splashing up but everything inside the backpack is safe and dry, which is really helpful. So first off, let's open up the backpack, see what we got inside. We packed it up, we charged the drone up, and so it's ready to go. So first of all, we have the drone itself inside of this nice protective waterproof bag, which I really like, especially when um, the dive is over, you can put the drone back into this bag. But as you can see, we'll take this off, and then we have that nice little cover that the drone goes in, so we can put the drone aside, and now we can actually take the drone out of this. Actually, let's leave it in this when we're doing this. So as you can see, when the drone is done, you get this nice little microfiber towel to put the drone, uh, dry the drone off with and everything, which is really nice as well. Or you could set this wherever you're doing on a dock or on the rocks or whatever, and then set stuff on it. I like that as well. But let's put that back in the bag for right now. And then let's get out the tether. So this is the 300, or rather 100 meter tether, 330 feet tether that the drone comes with as you can see 
So we'll take that out of the bag and I'm gonna have someone here helping me unravel the tether as well. So as you can see, the tether unravels this way. So as you can see, this little thing right here, it's actually winched in there as you can see and that connects to the base station that stays on the surface. Let's put this down here and let's get out the base station itself. And I think I put that in this pocket right here. And the base station is actually the part of the drone that you have to charge. So here's the base station for this particular drone. And as you can see, you put the SD card actually in the base station as well. It's also got a little cool HDMI output as well. So you can see what the drone sees. And so what we're gonna wanna do is like I said, attach this part of the tether to the base station. So the part of the tether that has that little knot in it right there that only goes that far, this is the part you're gonna to wanna to attach to the base station. So to attach it, you just plug it in um, right here, just gotta line that up there and plug that in. Let me just make sure it's plugged in the right way. You just push it in there and then you screw this shut. So as you can see, this creates a really secure connection once you screw this shut. And there we go. So now we got that connected. And I'm gonna actually keep the base station in this bag on the surface. So that's gonna help um, keep it secure. And I think I might even keep it in this bag as well. I'm just gonna put it there and forget about it. Now we have to actually turn on the base station. And to do that, you just hit that little switch right there and you'll see these little blinking LEDs signal that it is on. But before we actually turn it on, let's plug this into the drone. So to do that, we'll take this opposite part and we'll plug it into the top of the Gladius Mini, the body of the Gladius Mini. As you can see, it just goes like that. And then we just screw that shut. We'll wanna make sure that's very tight to make sure it's watertight. And also you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the O-rings are in there as well. So no water actually manages to, to get in there. So make sure that's very tight. Um, so no water is gonna leak in. And it's attached to the tether and the base station, which is very cool. So now let's put together the controller once again. I took it apart just for the ease of transport um, and portability reasons. But let's put the controller back together real quick. Perfect, so there we go. We got the phone holder on the Chasing Innovations Gladius Mini controller and we got the base station connected to the drone and to the tether. So now I'm gonna show you how to actually turn on this drone, the base station, the controller, attach it to your mobile phone or iPad or tablet, whatever you're using to um, use as a viewfinder for this drone. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that and then we'll take the drone for a test dive in the water. All right, now that we have everything connected, it's time to turn on the base station. And remember, we do that by just flipping this little switch right here to green and you'll actually hear the drone make an audible sound and there we go, it's getting connected. And once we see these LEDs flash green, we'll know that the drone is completely connected. So there's that audible sound, little music tone that the drone displays. And now as you can see, um, there we go, the drone is emitting 5G Wi-Fi. So we can actually attach that, our phone to the drone now. So to attach the phone to the drone, you're gonna wanna download the, um, the corresponding app. And I can put a link in the description where you can download this app as well. So now that all this is set up, as you can see, the blue light means that the ROV, the actual Gladius, Gladius Mini itself, is attached to the base station. And you can see that 5G light uh, flashing right there. It's lit up blue, which means that it's emitting the 5G Wi-Fi. So now it's time to connect the phone. But before we do that, I'd just like to put that in there like so. Close that bag so no water gets into the base station. And then I'd just like to leave that in the actual bag the backpack as well. So that keeps everything nice and secure. So um, none of our other gear gets out and you can put like your keys or your phone in this case, which I really like. And I love how it's got these waterproof seals. Um, Chasing Innovations definitely did a great job with that. So let's shut this here. So we have it all good, all set up. So now it's time to actually connect to the drone's Wi-Fi. And to do that, we have to turn on Wi-Fi on our device, and then we have to connect it to the drone's Wi-Fi network that is emitting. There we go, Gladius 5G, that is the Wi-Fi network. As you can see, I've already connected it in the past, so it automatically connected. But you just gotta make sure you connect to that Gladius 5G network. And if you're wondering what the password is for that Wi-Fi network, it actually shows it in the manual for this Chasing Innovations Gladius Mini underwater drone. So now when we open up the app, we can see that the Gladius Mini is actually connected. You'll see that little thing there showing that it's connected. Now we can hit start. And now it's gonna ask to connect to the controller. And to do that, we have to actually turn on the controller. So we flip the controller switch to on and make sure you have all these uh, switched to on and then click connection handle. And now as you can see, it's searching and then you just gotta click that and then click select. And now the controller is connecting to the mobile phone and it says the handle is connected, perfect. 
So now we've connected the mobile phone with the mobile app to the controller. And this goes for if you have any Android device, including tablets or anything. So there we go, the handle is connected. And now, as you can see, we're getting a live view from the Gladius Mini. And it's in that case right now, so the camera's blocked, so you can't really see anything. I'm super excited to see how this thing actually performs in the water. All right, everybody, so now we're gonna put the Gladius Mini underwater drone into the water. So to do that, as you can see, we can just throw it in just like so. And now the drone is in the water and we're all ready to go. So now let's get the controller and let's get the, mo let's get the drone connected. So to connect the drone, you have to hit this little lock button right here. And this, that actually unlocks the motors and you can see the drone sink right there. Okay, so now that we have the drone in the water, we're gonna start recording so you guys can see and I'll actually overlay something on the screen so you can see what the drone is seeing. But as you can see, depth hold is actually off so the drone might start sinking and we can just push up on the right stick and the drone will come up to the surface. So as you can see, if I hold the right stick, the drone comes up to the surface. And if I push the right stick down, the drone actually sinks, which is very cool. And this is really cool. It feels like I'm literally flying a drone underwater. So here we go, I'm gonna click forward now and um, the drone's gonna go out. So we just wanna make sure it has enough tether. So we're gonna go forward here and I, I can see my depth here on the controller as well and everything. So here we go and I can just push the left stick sideways and the drone will actually turn. So if I push down here, we can sink the drone. So let's just go down a little bit here. All right, so now the drone is underwater and I am controlling it and here we go. Oh, this is so cool. I'm moving forward along the bed of this lake. I'm actually in Lake Tahoe right now um, in Sand Harbor and I'm moving along the bottom of the lake. This is so cool. Oh my gosh. So I can see the tether being pulled out. If you can pan the camera up to show the tether being pulled out as I move with the drone. Um, I see it moving away. Oh cool, I see some rocks over here. I'm gonna go over and see uh, what these rocks are doing. Well, this is so cool. So there we go, let's just go forward. And it's really wavy right now and this drone is handling the waves amazingly good. This is so cool. So now I'm looking at some, is that a pine cone? It looks like, what well, looks like a pine cone underwater. Very, very cool. Let's just go along the seabed here. Um, so we're going farther and farther away. This is so cool, oh my gosh. So this, I'm, I'm going further away and I see the seabed and I'm just going along it. So I'm still moving along the bottom of the lake right now and I'm just gonna do a little turn right here, a little 180 degree turn so I can start coming back and this is so cool. I can literally explore the lake bed from above the water. This is so cool. So I'm gonna go over and see what this little thing is. It looks like a little stick down here or something. Oh yeah, there it is. That is so cool. Whoa, I'm gonna run into the bottom, give it some gas. There we go. So I almost just ran into the bottom there. And you can actually pitch the drone by using this right here. So either way you scroll, the drone will either pitch this way or this way. So that's really cool. And you can actually see a little 3D graphic of the drone right there um, showing how the drone is oriented. So right now the drone's just sitting on the bottom right now, the bottom of the lake bed. But I'm gonna take it off here. So now I'm just gonna demonstrate to you guys how you can actually tilt the drone by using um, the little scroll on the side. So as you can see, we can pitch if the drone starts pitching up too much, we can then pitch it down by just scrolling the side, just like that. All right, everybody, so after trying to use this drone a little bit, it got it was a little bit confusing to me because the controls weren't exactly responding how it said it would in the manual, and that's because by default, it comes in the Japanese version. So to put it back into the American version, you go to um, settings within the app and then handle, and then make sure the control is set to USA. By default, it'll be set to Japan. You can just set that to USA if you're in the USA or if you're in Japan and you prefer those kind of controls, you can hit that. But I was just um, expecting the American controls because I read the manual and and um, I was familiarizing myself with the American controls. And the American controls are when you push the left stick up and down, the drone will vertically go up and down. When you push the left stick left to right, then the drone will um, pan left to right. And then for the right stick, if you push the right stick forward, the drone will go forward. If you push the right stick back, the drone will go backwards. And then for the pitching, you just scroll this little thing right here on the back and the drone will either pitch itself down or up like so. So now let's put the drone back in the water and see how it does now that it got the controls correct. All right, so now I'm kind of understanding how to control the drone a little bit better. So I'm just doing some maneuvers by the dock here. 
and here we go as you can see if you push a left stick down the drone goes down push a left stick up the drone comes up it's a bit like flying the drone has to be moving forward to be able to go up and down so as you can see if we go down um, the drone will just go just like this and let's take it out a little bit farther here and there we go we can actually see the dock and the the cable from the drone itself right there. So we're going really far out with this drone right now. Um, and we are really far right now. And the drone is going very good just along the sea bottom right here, or rather the lake bottom. And this is really cool. It kind of feels like I'm in the drone right now. So I'm... Um, Going along the bottom here, let's actually bring it down a little bit. It looks like the depth is actually increasing, so we'll bring the drone a little bit farther down here. There we go. Wow, this is really cool. I'm really far out here right now. This is so cool. I'm just going along the lake bottom right now, looking at everything. I see something uh, in the distance here. I'm going to go check out what this is. So what, um, I think that's actually, that looks like the bottom of a buoy or what was once a buoy. Um, I'm kind of going around right now. This is really cool. Very cool. So I'm going to turn around here. Right now I'm really far away, but I really like actually how you can see the tether. and You can actually kind of follow the tether back to where you took the drone off from. So if I just follow this tether here um, and the directions on the app, the app actually shows which direction I'm going in. So I'm going southeast right now. And I'm going back towards the dock right now, full speed which is very cool. So I can actually go along the bottom here since I know which direction the dock is in. I can actually bring it down a little bit here and go along the bottom. And these colors are really cool too here um, in Lake Tahoe right now because it is sunset right now. So as you can see, I'm just going along the lake bottom, coming back towards the dock right now. So if you look at the top of the app right there, you can see the direction. So I'm going southeast right now, which is where we uh, put the drone in the water it's where our dock is so we're coming back towards the dock and I can actually see the drone if you can pan the camera over right there you can actually see the drone going in the water which is really cool to be able to see that in the water and it looks like there's some uh, weird things under the dock here it looks like some poles or something which is pretty cool there we go so we're just going around with this drone this is really fun it, it, it feels like you're flying an RC airplane underwater it's more I would say this more like flying a plane than it is like flying a drone definitely because the drone has to be moving to be able to go up and down so it's definitely a bit more like flying a plane and I hope I don't okay good I didn't tangle it up right there I got to be sure not to um, tie the tether into any knots or anything so we're gonna go over in this direction a little bit and see what's over here so it looks like there's actually some some rocks down here which is really cool and some uh, what well, looks like a metal beam. Oh, this is another dock down here, which is, that's really cool. So let's go over in this direction a little bit, going northwest right now. It's going along the lake bottom. Looks like some, oh, another pine cone right there. Oh, let's go up. Oh, up, up, up. There we go. Whoa, what's that? Looks like some um, concrete blocks or something. Got to be sure not to hit it. Whoa. take it off right here so as you guys can see there is the drone and it was going a little bit sideways right there because there's um, some stuff in the propeller it looks like so we can actually pick it up by the tether which I really like too um, the tether is really strong so as you can see we just got some stuff in the propellers we can just pull that out there but you just want to be aware that if this drone starts malfunctioning in any way it's probably something that's caught in the propellers but overall, I really like this underwater drone. Really cool. As you can see, the live feed right there of the drone on the dock. Really cool. Really um, fast FPV. Um, definitely hardly any latency whatsoever. So overall, amazing drone. Underwater drone for the price. And right now, we only have 9% battery in the drone. So 
We're basically out of battery, so it's really good we got it um, up here before it ran runs out of battery. But if it does run out of battery, you can pull on the tether, granted that there's no obstacles in your way as you're pulling the drone back. And be sure to lock the motors too if you do pull the drone back by the tether cord right here. So. Overall, amazing drone, um, a, a bit more like a flying an RC airplane underwater, I must say, than an actual drone. But it definitely is an underwater drone slash ROV slash plane that you can basically fly beneath the water. Super cool. I always wish there was something like this. One thing you'll want to keep in mind as well when you're operating the Gladius Mini underwater is that when you do hit the bottom, sometimes sand gets stirred up into these vents right here. And when you tilt the drone, you can actually hear a little bit of sand within there, but we can just pour it out here and make sure you rinse it off with fresh water as well after you're done using the Gladius Mini. So there is a little bit of sand in there, but as you can see, most of it's just pouring out these vents here. And that's how the sand actually gets in is through these vents, especially if you do hit the bottom. So try your best not to hit the bottom of the seabed or the lake bed or wherever you're using the Gladius Mini so no sand actually gets inside. So that's just something you want to keep in mind when operating this underwater drone. Also, this drone comes with a freshwater ballast slash weight installed on the drone. But if you're operating this drone in salt water, you're going to want to make sure to swap it out with the also included seawater um, weight ballast. So there's a little lead weight here, and you want to swap that out with the seawater one, which is also included in the package of the Gladius Mini drone. So make sure you have the correct weight, otherwise the drone might malfunction in the water. But we're in Lake Tahoe right now, and this is fresh water, so we just keep the fresh water um, ballast installed on this drone. So one thing I really like about this drone too is that you can actually hold it with these little carrying handles right there. That's actually something that's wrong with a lot of these underwater drones, is that they're really awkward to hold unless you have some kind of case for them or something. But I really like that if you want to walk somewhere to use this drone or something, you can just hold the drone using this little um, handle right here. Now, obviously don't do it when the drone is on because you might get your fingers stuck in those propellers right there. But I just wanted to note that I really like this cool little handle right here for carrying the drone. And the Gladius Mini did an amazing job at performing underwater. Overall, highly recommend this underwater drone to anybody looking for an underwater drone. The Gladius Mini is definitely the best underwater drone I've ever flown so far. So thanks so much for watching everybody. Subscribe to Drone Rich for more drone reviews like this and we'll see you guys in the next video.